Like millions of others, I became aware of what has been deemed the Israel-Palestine conflict after the tragic events that occurred on October 7th. Though I was horrified, I kept thinking, if this is just a conflict, it'll be resolved soon. But it wasn't resolved. It kept escalating. I started doing my own research on what was really happening in Gaza through news articles and countless TikToks from youth journalists on the ground. I've watched videos of families and homes being bombed and torn apart, a generation of children being completely wiped out by Israeli forces. I realized that this wasn't just a mere conflict, and it didn't just begin on October 7th. More than 40,000 people have been killed, about half of which are children. Hundreds of thousands more are injured, facing forced starvation, displacement, and constant bombardment. And the violence still continues to this day. And what feels even more strange is that while this manufactured humanitarian crisis goes on, many activists and social influencers have been completely silent. Social media platforms are even censoring content that calls attention to the growing number of innocent civilian casualties in Palestine. The culture of silence even continues in our school buildings and classrooms, where learning and critical thought are supposed to be encouraged. Here in Philadelphia, students, educators, and organizers join millions around the world in mass protests to bring attention to Israel's war on Palestine through walkouts, encampments, teach-ins, and different forms of creative activism. In this segment, we hear from some attendees at a recent protest condemning the school district's censorship of Palestinian teachings. to bring, to shed light on the censorship, on the shunning, on the harassment and bullying that teachers have come under um, from their administrators, their colleagues, the school board, uh, for even mentioning Palestine, for not allowing Palestinian students to completely and fully identify as such. I'm out here today as a parent. I have a second grader and a fourth grader in the Philadelphia Public Schools. And I'm also out here as a rabbi. I have a congregation in West Philadelphia, Cold Tzedek Synagogue, and also just a person of conscience and faith um, out here because I don't believe in censorship. And I'm very concerned that anti-Semitism is being used to silence uh, a call for justice. I've been working at a nonprofit that does a lot of partnerships with the School District of Philadelphia. I'm a product of the School District of Philadelphia as a place of education and enlightenment and a, as a place that summarizes major historic struggles like apartheid. We should be able to recognize when those things are happening right in front of our eyes and that's what's happening in Palestine. We're speaking against injustice. We do not want our district to be complicit with genocide. <laughs> one of the failures of the school district, which is that they've not made a curricular point to integrate what is happening in the world, one, arguably the most pressing issue that's facing students um, across generations. And so a lot of what I hear from my kids is that they're talking about it at recess, on the playground, at lunch, um, and it's very divisive. Kids are, are you with Israel? Are you with Palestine? And they don't have ways of thinking constructively and critically and compassionately together. And it's creating a dynamic of sort of us, them thinking. There's not space for um, more nuanced conversation and for them to really learn about um, what's happening in Gaza and the history and the colonial history of the state of Israel. They should be asking, why are we speaking out against the war in Ukraine but not against the war in Palestine? Why, why is the U.S. sending aid to Ukraine and, and not to Palestine? Why is the U.S. nervous to send U.S. bombs to Russia but not nervous to send bombs to Gaza? Right? These are the kinds of questions that students should be asking in U.S. history classes and world history classes in, in high schools across the country. I think the, the effort to silence um, you know, a side of the argument is part of uh, a larger project. Um, there's uh, accusations thrown out against teachers all the time for so-called indoctrination, and this is an excuse to kind of try to shut down um, people teaching the truth, essentially, in the classroom. What would you describe is at stake here, and what do you think would be lost if people remain, to, remain quiet? Our existence is at stake. Palestinian existence is at stake. Um, if you are talking about a, an entire community, an entire race, an entire uh, sector of people, that is tragic to say that you want to erase an entire, you know, and annihilate a group of people. 
the, the longer we are, the school district is silent and the world is silent, the more Palestinians will die in this uh, needless genocide. The fact that since October 7th, we've been witnessing a live stream genocide and it's been normalized that we still go to work because the bombs aren't happening around us. Like I think people are becoming desensitized to like the very tangible impacts of fascism. And on our side, we witness fascism by increased policing, police in schools, police everywhere, police telling us how to police one another. And we're slowly being desensitized at home, desensitized to it at home. But we're also now being desensitized to it at a massive scale abroad when we're literally seeing bombs dropped on children. Looking at Philadelphia students, and they are dealing with violence in the streets in their everyday life, and then they are going onto their phones and witnessing, witnessing violence. So it's a challenge to ask for Philadelphia students to act in ways that show care for all people and themselves with all this violence. These people in Palestine aren't just statistics, they aren't just bodies, they aren't just corpses. They are lovers, they are poets, they are painters, they are children, they are people with lives like us. What message do you want people to leave with when they watch this video? I would say even if you don't feel like you have a stake or you feel like you want to remain apolitical. I meet a lot of well-meaning people who just say I'm not involved or I don't want to know about it. It's not hard to like absolve yourself of your responsibility if you say that you just don't know anything about it, but there's so much information out here and it's so pressing that you know about it and that you take a stance about it because people are dying by weapons made in your own country, especially, I'm talking to people living at the center of empire in the United States. People are dying by weapons made by your tax dollars, so you should take a stance, and that's really all I want people to know.